Well, we've had quite a busy few days with Mpur's uh, 75th birthday and uh, still other activities going on. So I'll try to keep this a bit a bit short tonight and we'll have a, an optional evening sit for those people who would like to, to do the late night visual. I've been thinking a bit about and, and trying to contemplate a bit more around uh, Kanti and um, I find that uh, there are some new things I learn in meditation and mostly it's just about being patient with it and enduring sometimes plateaus and other times seeing that the, the mind is, is coming together in a good way and other times not. But that, that lesson that uh, the Buddha teaches is, is something that's so important is this this the sense of, of patient endurance, just continuing with a, a sense of being patient with our experience. And Lumpur is, you know, uh, Lumpur Cha taught that as well. And Lumpur Pasna also emphasizes that in the practice. And I, I think because there can be a, an, an easy feeling of just wanting to give up and pursue something else maybe that's more pleasurable, whatever that might be. So for, for the last week or so, something that's been coming up for me is just a I'll sometimes do various jobs in the monastery, and so the, the latest one is, is working on a deck. And I imagine getting... I, I asked to, to do the work with Ajahn Yaniko, but he, he has, uh, he's quite busy, so he wasn't able to do much, but he said he would train me. And I immediately you know, could see that, that sense of, no, I don't want to do that. That's, I can't lead a project like that because I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. And... Just, again, that, that sense of patience that can arise with like, okay, well, can I just rise up to that challenge immediately and say, okay. And that happened, but, it, but at first it wasn't there. There was that desire to, to definitely, oh, no way, I don't want to have to do this. So then, you know, then, then the, the very immediate sense of like, okay, I'm going to do it, there's just that sense of relaxing that can occur, so that, that uh, no longer arguing with wanting to, to get away with dukkha or get away from dukkha or, or um, run away from a situation. And it's, it's interesting how the, you know, that, the experience of that resistance is there's, there's a lot of suffering there. But then as soon as that resistance is let go of, and especially when it's, you know, we know it's something we don't want to do, it's, it's just interesting how much that's pleasant. You know, it's a pleasant experience, even when we're engaging in the, with the, un, the, the disliked, uh, the not being associated with, there's pleasure in in that letting go, and so many of us know that. But it's it's very easy, I can see for myself, just to fall into that that sense of resistance. And then, so you know, working on this project has been helpful. It's only been a week, but I just see the the amount of dukkha that that I can create. At first, the I guess the overwhelming theme that comes up for me is is a lot of around like just not letting go of things not not kind of wanting to just move forward and put something down but that that sort of niggling feeling of like this isn't right and I want to hold on to that that sense of not being right and how unbeneficial that usually is and so at at first it was uh working with two uh it was explained by Ajahn Yanako what to do with two other very kind guests in the monastery and one of them turned out to be a professional deck installer and uh, in, especially with the deck that we were working with, which is this stuff called Trex. But then he was leaving the, the day after that. And I thought, oh, jeez, you know, just lamenting. Oh, why didn't, how come this just wasn't done two weeks ago when he started to stay here? And then, and then um, and this other fellow, same thing. He's a friend of the monastery, and they were both, I don't know if they were leaving together, but they were leaving on the same day. And I was just, oh, jeez. But just the, the, the silliness of that is just like, well, it is what it is. I mean, they, who knows? Maybe they would have, like, lost an arm or a leg or something. I mean, you don't know it's really beneficial or the deck would have turned out terribly. You just, you never know. But that sense of mind of I don't want to, I don't want to let go of this or, or um, it shouldn't be this way. It's just so obvious. And then the dukkha that comes with it. So just moving forward from that. And, of course, there's dukkha in even... You know, just working with other people, even if they're professionals, there's something around that, the mind state of perfectionism that I find myself often caught in. And so things just are, they're never perfect. So there's, there's often that, that sense of disappointment. And then after these two helpful workers, guests left, and then 
I was then now training others on something I had no idea what to do with. So it was like kind of like almost the blind leading the blind. But then it started to, you know, it started to work out and I could just see how much dukkha I was, I was relating to this project within my, my experience because it was, um, it was just either not going fast enough or things were being broken by myself or the other kind uh, residents who were, who were helping me with it. And I, I could see that how much I was carrying into this and I, and I am just bringing this up just to encourage others to examine this like sense of expectation. It's going to go like this. Uh, it's going to go very quick today. Or we got through the hard part. Now it'll just go fast. There won't be any challenges. Uh, it's going to be easy. And how much of a, a setup that is, an unfortunate setup that is, in you know, in pursuing any kind of thing we're doing. And so I, I started talking about this with meditation, and we can see that with meditation, just how you know, when we're new to it, there can be a lot of like really interesting experiences going on, and and things that are happening, and then. After a long time, we get, we get kind of used to what it's like. But that expectation sometimes when things are going poorly, that they're just going to continue to go poorly, or it's my fault, and I start to identify with it, or, or when things go well, and it's like me, I, I did that. must be all this wisdom I've generated over the many times I've meditated, and then it just crashes down, and what, what happened, what's wrong? And so it's, it's so beneficial to just keep looking at that sense of expectation and knowing that if we have one, then we're, we're really setting ourselves up for dukkha. We're setting ourselves up for a lot of pain and, and disappointment. Because even if we get what we want, even if we do meet our expectations, eventually we'll, we'll likely be separated from them. I mean, the, the one exception is enlightenment. But uh, that's an, an expectation that, that's uh, quite hard to fulfill, and I'm not sure how many people... Uh, expect that so soon in their life. I think one once most people start to practice a bit, they they get the gist. Oh, this is a really long path. I remember Lumpur Pasano said that when he he started to practice as a very young man, or actually before he started practicing, I think he was his idea was to go to Thailand and then spend about three months, get enlightened, and then go back to the world. So yeah, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily work out that way. So that sense of, of being patient with our experience is so important, and yet how often we can quickly sabotage what we're doing, just even with that sense of hearing about this right now, and then, and then it might be like, well, geez, this talk's already going on for like 10 minutes now. You know, when's it going to end? And so we can, we can just not be aware that we're, we're carrying this around with whatever we're doing. I remember, you know, cooking in the kitchen, even though it was such a long time ago, there was just so much to learn in there because there, uh, I just wasn't able to to really generate so much patience, and so it was it was a, a strong learning experience each day because I was confronted with a sense of okay, need more patience here, need to kind of keep calm, carry on, quiet the mind, and not get too lost in the details, but also not expect so much. And so these, you know, these things that we work on, they're, they're often very helpful for us to really use as a, a tool to understand our, you know, what it is that we're going through, what it is that we're, we're having problems with. And especially in the realm of, I think, identification. As I'm working, uh, like just in this, in this last project, I could see just there's, you know, the, just the sense of, of identity I have, the sense of like, I did that or I shouldn't have done that. And it was, this, it was as basic as just like, screwing in a deck screw and and it was either like too shallow or it had gone too deep or the worst was when it stopped moving and it was the head was just stuck above the surface and it was it was very personal I took that in a very personal way and and I thought you know why how can this keep happening to me and it's ridiculous you know it's it's um that I I was saying to Ben Garrett, who were working with me the last couple of days, like, oh, that one was like butter. It was so smooth. And then, oh, I can't believe that one. What's going on? And, <laughs> and you know, and it's just like ridiculous. And then I'm thinking like, oh, these poor guys, you know. Like, oh, Ajahn, I'm sorry I, uh, I did this. And I said, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's just that, that sense of, of getting so worked up about something so small. And then I, I brought... We had our business meeting up top, and I thought, okay, Ajahn Yannick, can you look at the deck? And he, he was like, no. <laughs> and uh, I said, really? And he said, no, I'm just, no, I'll go look at the deck. And so he looked at it, and, and he said, 
yeah, good job, good job. And I, and I started pointing out all the mistakes. Well, what do you think? I couldn't get that screw in. See, I mean, what should I do with that? And he said, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And I said, well, what about the, you know, there's like a, you know, about a third of an inch where it's rising right here. He says, that's not a problem. And, uh, you know, Ajahn Yannicka was quite experienced in these things. So I thought, okay, not a problem. But I think it's a problem. So, so then what to do? You know, just, just that, that sense of letting go. And then also the, the, the other way, I mean, the other side of Dukkha, just not wanting to do something that I know would make an improvement. So there's, there, was, there is one area I do need to change and suggestions have been made. And said, oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, maybe I'll do it now. Then. But it, it's so interesting just to know, well, whatever is going to happen, whether I pursue it or not, if there's a problem, it's just going to be another thing. I mean, sometimes materials get broken. Sometimes things happen. We, we can't help that. We, we want it not to happen, but it's just part of life. It's part of, you know, just living every day. Things break, things don't work out. The body gets injured and maybe it recovers, maybe it doesn't. But to whine about it or, or to carry tension in the body, carry this dukkha around, it's just not the pursuit of, of what we're doing. It's a, that we're, we're learning so much to try to really let go of that. And especially that, that identity, I mean, it's... It's interesting to see that uh, without looking very closely, these uh, Lumpur Sachito refers to sankharas or these sort of concocted mental states, how we, how we kind of create our, our own experience as he uses the word programs for them, which I think is very, very helpful. I think this is just this sort of automatic program or this habit that I have. Another word is like mental formation or mental concoction. But I like this word program because it's like we create this experience of our, our own, our self. We put so much of it together and we, we get very addicted to that form of it being about me. But it's, it's just a program. It's just a habit. And as I was saying, like, I might just kind of keep reacting to the depth level of each screw and get upset or, you know, it's like obsessed with success or failure. It's like, oh, that one was perfect. And this is just a worldly pursuit, but it's also a pursuit around creating who I am. You know, that I'm, I'm a person who got it right. I'm a person who got it wrong. Right, wrong, right, wrong. I mean, each screw is right and wrong. And then when I'm able to really kind of see that, I say, oh, this is really not pleasant. You know, and, and to be patient with that process and then coming back to the body then just informs me, okay, what is actually happening here? And I can see there, this is coming out of some dukkha. There's always some tension that's, that's created in the body around this. So I come back and I feel that, and then I know, okay, this is the mental formation that keeps coming up out of that. And as Ajahn Yanika was talking about with this Lumpur Sumedho's book, Don't Take Your Life Personally, it's so, such a perfect statement for how we can see in so many moments, just almost every moment, we are creating this sense of self. We are creating this person, and it's a program. It's like, it's just, it can be very automatic. And so what's, what's often helpful, as, as I'm mentioning, is just coming back to the body, being witness to our own body, and then seeing when we're peaceful with our experience and we're able to kind of understand when we're suffering, then we see these mental formations, we see these programs, these habits of ours. And then we could begin to, in a way, explore them and then do our best to let go of them. But that does take a lot of patience. It takes patience to see them, and it takes patience to let go of them. And as I was saying for myself, the letting go is the hardest part. And that happens often with just things that, that don't work out. I was thinking, like, like one of them is so silly. I'm, I'm walking to the monastery from the property across the street, Santi Vihara, and immediately pops into my mind this cat that's around. And I'm just, oh, this poor cat. What are we going to do about this cat? And then I just look at it. I said, wow, you know, this... Yeah, it is kind of sad. There's a cat. I mean, maybe. I mean, it seems to be doing okay here. It's been here a while. But the, the habit of, I mean, the caring habit is nice, but the something is wrong here is very, um, that's where the, the dukkha gets caught. That's where the hook gets caught in. There's something wrong. There's always going to be a cat that shows up in the monastery. It, it doesn't seem to have stopped. And the fear and worry and angst around it that I can see in myself, I just saw, you know, I'm, I'm like, walking towards the Dhamma Hall down Tom Kai Road and thinking about this cat and think this is, uh, this is just silly. You know, it's just sort of a, an attachment to 
to a being, but it's, it's doing its own thing. It's probably worrying about itself a lot less than I am. And this, this just happens pervasively with so many things. I can just identify, you know, when something, I, I think it's, I, I don't want it to be this way or I don't like it, it's uncomfortable. I mean, when it comes to an animal like that, it's interesting. People often talk about when to euthanize their animal and when to, when is it appropriate to give my animal some, some medicine, medicine that will make it die. And from a Buddhist perspective, there's not a time to do that. Death is a very natural thing. So it's, it's okay, you know. It's okay to allow an animal, uh, whether we own that animal or we, you know, it's, our, it's an animal that lives with us or it's a wild animal, it's okay for it to die. You know, I was with my father when he died, and it's not like, you know, we said, oh, this is kind of uncomfortable. What it comes from is a sense of discomfort. He's suffering. Let's inject him with something. And, you know, it's, death is something that people have gone through for so long. And we can help with pain. I mean, there's nothing wrong with pain medication. But to end a life, you know, where is that necessarily coming from? You know, often, so for, for me, like just thinking about that with an animal, it's like, oh, I'm uncomfortable with its suffering. I don't want it to suffer. I'm, I feel uncomfortable. And I don't want to feel uncomfortable anymore, so I'm going to kill it. And that's what's actually happening. Again, you know, there's nothing wrong with using pain medication to help with that, you know, if there's severe pain in human beings or animals. But if we're really aware of that, then we see that, that uh, there doesn't have to be a, a pursuit of, at all of, of a desire to end a life because of our own discomfort. And just, just that sense of the same with just worrying about an animal. I mean, there can be that concern, but there's also that sense of like just letting nature go nature's way. We try to care as much as we can, but we also know that all of us, just like all of the animals, all the trees, everything, even decks, they die. You know, they fall apart. They don't live. And that's just a, a normal aspect of life. And so in examining that, then it's just, it just feels that, that that sense of patience with our own desires to, to have something different than it is, is there for us. But also that letting go is just, is just so important. And it's something that we can try to pursue in, in all of our, our activities, whether we're, we're sitting here for an hour by ourselves and we're not feeling patient. You know, there's, there's something that, that's telling us I'm, I'm wrong or my experience isn't the way I want it to be, and it shouldn't be that way. And so we, we just have this kanti, this, this patience to, to work with that, but also the wisdom to know when, when it's right to, to let go. And even when, when we can't let go, you know, as, as Ajahn Chah says in his, his uh, famous quote, you know, if you can't make something work out for yourself, then you, know, you try to do your best to make it good, whatever that thing is. I know I've totally botched that quote, but anyway, you, you try to make something work out in the best circumstances that you can, even if you are finding that it's just not, it's not working in some way or it's not, it's not good, it's not helpful. And so we can, we can keep pursuing that. We can try to find that out. And, and sometimes there's, there's that beautiful moment in our practice, that, oh, aha, that's right, this is what's needed right here. And I figured it out. And and there is less dukkha. And the wisdom then arises is now I can see how to pursue that in the future. I might still make a mistake again in the same way, but I can see how to rise out of that now because I was successful in that way. I did let go. And I did see, I did penetrate that, that understanding of the dukkha that was present and what was causing that. So these are just uh, some words of reflection tonight. And... Um, if there's anything that's been helpful for you, please take it with you and, and uh, turn over it, bring it up. And anything that hasn't been helpful, just feel free to leave behind. <laughs>